Hi everybody. This is the video that I've been meaning to do, just haven't got to it because there's so much stuff that's been going on. But this is my cancer video. I wanted to tell everyone about the experience so far and just, you know, cause awareness and, you know, anything for anybody. So pretty much during my senior year of high school, I was having a little bit of problems with just some pain. Nothing too, nothing too big. I went through the whole summer and then when fall came along, that's when I started school for for community college. But um pretty much went through the whole fall good and everything. And then right before my 19th birthday, I had some problems with more pain in my abdomen area and just the point of getting full really fast for some reason. Like, I'm the type of person that likes to eat and I like to cook and, you know, me and my friends we would all just go to the buffet or just do anything pretty much. That Anything that we did, it always had food involved. So it's like, I would eat just a little bit, a little, little tiny portion of something and then it would be like, dang. I'm already full, like what the heck is going on? But pretty much during the tail end, going into fall, hitting winter a little bit, not fall, winter, what the heck is that? No. In, in March, I went to the doctor. I went to OBGYN in, actually, no, wait, sorry. Okay. I went, <laughs> I was at school, and then I felt like a hard pain when I'm like riding the bus and everything, because I take the city bus. So, um, what happened was after all my classes were done, I told my mom to come pick me up and let's go to the hospital because I had some really harsh pains that were going on and plus it was like, I was getting fatter and fatter and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, why am I gaining so much weight? Because usually, even though we eat a lot, like, we still don't gain weight for the food that we consume. So... I'm just like, what the heck is going on? Then I'm getting shortness of breath as I'm walking through campus and going to class. Like, more of a like, dang girl, you fat. Like, <laughs> if I can't make it from point A to point B without like, <sighs> then like, girl, you need to lose weight. But then at the same time, it was like, I, can't, I couldn't really do any physical activity because of what was growing in my stomach pretty much. And the thought, did cross my mind, oh, maybe you're pregnant, but then I thought to myself, like, how the, how the, how the heck are you gonna be pregnant you haven't had sex yet? So, so like, it was just crazy, so the, all these thoughts running through my mind as I'm on the way to the hospital, and then the, the whole time when I was there, we did testing and everything, and it was like, at first, they were trying to say that I didn't have insurance, but then I was like, whoa. So then like after they verified it and they brought me up upstairs and I had to do a CT scan and then I did an ultrasound. The ultrasound took forever. It was like, I feel like it was a whole hour because there was so much of hold your breath, let me turn you over, flop you over and let's get all the, the pictures of your abdomen and in your pelvis area because that was where the pain was happening. So during that whole time we're sitting there like what the heck is going on nobody's telling us anything went back to the room and then like I'll say 30 minutes later we have this tall old guy that's a thumb that's actually a doctor and he comes and tells us like like he sits down and I'm like what the heck is going on like oh my gosh like the heck is going on and so he's like yeah, what we found out was that you have a big cyst growing from somewhere in the pelvis area on up into your stomach area. So I was like, okay, that explains why it looks like I'm getting fat or, or anything towards that. And he's like, but the only thing is that it's really, really big. It was, when I got out of surgery, it was measured to be 24 centimeters going up which is like I want to say let's see like 20 something I don't remember 
but like it was really big that's all I knew and it and he told me that I had to go to go across the street the next day the next like following Monday because it was a Friday when I went. and he told me to go there because it's OBGYN and so waiting the whole weekend like da, 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 you know doing homework and whatnot I'm still worried and concerned about what just went down and what I heard because he's like it's big for it's it's pretty big for a young person and that we need to take action on it for anything just don't want anything bad happening pretty much and so Monday comes along I'm going across the street well not across the street but you know multi care and I will see this OBGYN first time I've ever been an OBGYN trust me never knew so um he looks over the papers and then he's like, yeah, we're going to have to do surgery within a couple of days. So we're going to have to get checked in and then the next day, like two days after that, and that's when we're supposed to have surgery. And I'm like, whoa, oh my gosh, like what the heck is going on? And he's like, we don't know what it is yet. We just know it's a cyst and it needs to come out. So, and this is like in March, this is the early March, middle March, right before my birthday. I had surgery on the 24th or something like that. You know, I had surgery on the 16th or something like that. But what ended up happening is I go through surgery and then he ends up, like, I don't even know because I'm in the bed and whatnot. And then I found out that it was a cyst growing from my ovary. And this is my, my left ovary like this huge cyst that just overlapped it so he had to take out my ovary my left ovary and fallopian tube plus detach the tumor well not tumor yet detach the cyst from large intestine and my bladder and then had to sew those up because it was feeding off of that and you know I go through having to put these big old staples like like the where he made the incision was pretty much here's the belly button and then under the belly button under all the way down to the beginning of your vagina <laughs> your vagina and it was it was painful it was painful coming out but like you know I just have a high tolerance weight so I just pretty much took it as it was and recovered from it and just it was it was the most awkwardest thing because I had a have my mom help me take showers, which is really, this is really nasty. Seeing my couldn't shoot, but I had to get over that because you know, girl needs to get showered. But having that happen, and then like, um, so my end of March, early April, I got a call when I was at school, and I was in math class, and I knew I was like early in the morning, and then sitting there and then I take this call and they're like you have cancer and I'm like what the fuck well my mind like what the fuck and I'm like okay okay like you're just thrown off because you're just sitting here doing math and then you find out you have cancer and then they gave me this 1-800 number to call and to pretty much call that number and I'm still in shock so it's like the whole month goes by, April goes by, and it's just like you get into this mode of like a semi-depression mode just because you're like damn I'm so young, you already took my ovary, I only have one more shot to have a kid, like one more ovary, eggs to either conceive a child or whatnot, but then you find out you have cancer and then nothing goes on the nothing goes on for the months and then summer goes along and I'm doing summer quarter doing summer quarter and then I find I'm finding out more and more it is getting harder to mobile myself and I'm like what the heck is going on now but then it's like I have so much knowledge of what happened before so then I call that same doctor and I'm like I think it's back and then he's like what do you mean it's back? How do you know? And I'm like, Nerd. I'm like, ah, I can feel it because when you when you 
you stand up like you're on a surfboard and you do a side to side action, you can feel something that's going do, 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 do in you if it's big enough. And it was big enough. And it was a rapid, it was a rapid growth. And it was getting to the point where I couldn't breathe once again. So that's a whole nother quarter just taken up and just not good grades at all. So I just, you know, told myself as a student, like, I'm just going to have to get over it and just do what I got to do. So pretty much all I did was, um, I was scheduled for another ultrasound and then knowing that the last one was cancerous, they sent me to an oncology building and it wasn't in Seattle, which was good because it's such a far drive and I know it's your health, but I didn't have a ride because my mom works and then my dad has to watch over there, but then it's just too much, too much, too much. So pretty much what I did was I went to the oncology, they did an ultrasound, they're like, it's back. And then I'm like, oh, another tumor, last, last ovary. It's at the point. It's at the point of the time where I can't, I can't savage it, and I can't savage my eggs. And so they scheduled me to have a uh, operation in October, which was heck of far from when I called. And I was like, okay. And so, like, as time went on, it got bigger and bigger, and it got harder. So. I called them and was like, um, can we move this, move, move the surgery up? I can't deal anymore. It's, it's like, we're going through a move and like while moving, like you can just feel something in your stomach, but then after a while, it's like, where did the tumor go? Did it move or it, it, where did it go? Because it's not so much pain anymore. And by the time that they said, okay, for the surgery to go earlier, it was in September, the end. was at the end of um, September and so what happened was I went into surgery and I went with a, a surgeon that was for oncology that was meant for to deal with cancer so it was a good part about it and when she went in there like I had no knowledge of nothing like all I know is right before surgery she had me sign this paper another paper with initials saying she might have to do a hysterectomy and that I wouldn't be able to have children or, or anything and it's kind of one of those things where you do like you want to say no but then you have to say yes at the same time because it's it's needed so I signed the paper and I just went into surgery and I came out and come out and I'm just like I'm whole oh, I'm super weak like I'm I'm coming out of a different room that I don't know because last time I remember I woke up in my actual room and this time I woke up not I was in the recovery room and um so like when I was done with that then I got sent to my room and then a day after that I finally got to know like what went down <laughs> because I knew that it was just so painful I was having troubles and I looked down and it's like from above your belly button all the way down to the bottom of the last incision and it's like a big old boom all these staples and everything and it's like dang and it's like going from above the belly button and then it goes zoop, and then it goes down and it's like whoa what the heck is going on so um then my doctor Uma, she comes and she tells me that they had to take my my last ovary my last fallopian tube which grew on other things, but then at the same time, the reason why I didn't feel it was because it burst. It burst a week before that, which was crazy that nothing happened, no infection or anything, because you can die from a tumor busting in you. But all it did was it burst and then all the juices, they had to surgically remove little tumors everywhere that went as far as down to my colon, which is really gross on now, but. They had to take the little tumors out and then they had to bandage up my my insides again and um what is that like they had to do all that and then they had to do three blood transfusions because i lost so much blood and it was just it was just a hot mess okay it was a hot mess that whole time it was a hot mess but pretty 
much all that happened and then action had to be taken. So then they're like, okay, so today you're gonna go into surgery once again, just a quick surgery, but you're gonna be awake for it. And I was like, my mind off, like, I ain't gonna do a surgery when I'm awake. I don't, I don't wanna feel it. But they're like, we have to put your port in. And then they, they tell me a little bit of what a port is. And it's for chemotherapy or getting blood from anything. And they put it in your chest and it then goes. That's why over here I have a scar is because this is what it looks like. It's, um, they cut you open, they make a little pocket. And then from here, it's like a little little thing it's like from here and then there's a tube that goes all the way up and then they cut again so they can see and they put it over your collarbone into your 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 big vein and that was crazy because they told me that I wasn't supposed to feel anything but I totally felt a lot of it and I was crying and it was just it was and I was supposed to forget stuff but I totally remember the whole thing and that was crazy enough so they have that the next day after my surgery and then um and so that was pretty much my surgery story and how I found out and it's called Sertali Sertali Lindling Tumor Cancer yeah I'll make sure I put it in the description or in the video somewhere because this one is the one dealing with your sex cords which sounds really gross but it deals with your sex cords and it, what it does it is it grows how it grows is it grows off of hormones and then it skirts out testosterone and then um i remember my doctor asking me did your voice change in any way and i'm like whoa no but like i did know something was going on because like i've been getting facial hair that was just more than anyone else and it was like i'm growing a beard here I need to shave my face but she was like okay that's good and it squirts out testosterone but pretty much it just grows and it's a really rare ovarian cancer it's a really rare ovarian cancer that only happens to usually people that are in their late 30s on down and they're like it's really rare that you're 18 19 and you have it so that's pretty much what it does and the cancer it just I don't know it just changed my life pretty much and they're like you have to go through chemotherapy and then all I know about chemo is like it's just nasty it's like not I don't know I have really crossed thoughts about chemo it's it's a it's a good agent but it breaks you down mentally and physically trust me it's like the one that they're giving me is, is bleomycin, the top of the side, it's cisplatin, and that's a three regimen. It's a hard regimen because of cisplatin, so I get really sick. But it's um my regimen is I usually go for five days, and Monday I get um, cisplatin and the top of the side. Then the Tuesday I usually get all three, and then the um. Wednesday through Friday I get the all, the all two and then and then I skip a couple of days and then when it comes to Tuesday I just do bleo and bleo is a 30 minute infusion but it's a pretty much a hard regimen because after I do five days then I do two Tuesdays and then they said I get a week off but there's no such thing as that I think they count their weeks as weekends because then I come back for another five days and is so hard but um I lost my hair and everything I do miss it a lot a very a lot but I wanted to hurry up and do this this cancer video before I go into the hospital because on the 23rd I'll be going to the hospital and I don't know for how long but because I have my last five days believe it or not and the last five days I did um, previously it was just it was too much it was just too much to handle and so I'm requested to stay at the hospital and they said that I can and it's just gonna be I just hope it's not as rough as last time because I just last time I think 
fainted and I was I fainted in the bathroom. My mom had to save me. It was just, it was too much and it, and it takes a really big toll on your body. So I'm just hoping that this time it's not going to be so hard. But thank you guys for watching and sorry that it's just kind of like all over the place. But I just wanted to get it out without any notes or anything. I don't want to cry, but you know. Thank you guys for watching.